what's going on everybody welcome to uh, my podcast slash live video um, wanted to answer a couple questions for people out there um, so I'm in front of the computer so if I'm turning it off that's what I'm doing I'm, I'm looking um, got a got a quick session I want to do um, we're here in Florida we're in Southwest Florida for those that don't know me uh, my name is Stas uh, a lot of people call me Broker Stas, especially online. Um, so obviously this is servicing those that are online. Um, anyhow, uh, I'm the broker owner of Aaron Catron and Company. Uh, me and my business partner Lance um, run Aaron Catron and Company out of Southwest Florida. We do have a sister company out in Oklahoma. For those that um, uh, know about the branch out in Oklahoma, uh, we have nothing to do with it as far as us ownership and running it. Um, but anyhow, we're here in beautiful Southwest Florida. We service both Charlotte and Sarasota County. Um, been getting a lot of questions on like Instagram, uh, you know, different social media outlets. And um, one of the biggest questions that a lot of people keep asking are, um, what, what is the process, if there is a process on uh, purchasing a home uh, or land? anything property period especially when you're out of state um, I get questions all the time via email and I always say hey there's no dumb questions and I mean I get I get some some pretty wild uh, questions uh, one of them wanting me to send them to a site that shows them um, elevation for the state of Florida what parts are lower than others uh, so they can determine how the value of homes are going to shift in the next couple of years I mean I I get I get them all um, and there there are no dumb questions I mean you know there um, I say hey why not ask it's not it's stupid if you don't ask so anyway uh, it, in my opinion in my professional opinion I will say yes uh, there is a process when it comes to purchasing a property um, I would say there, there's a couple of ways to start it out one obviously is to pick the area that you're interested in purchasing in so um, you know you want to know uh, what, what are you coming down here for are you here for beaches are you here for boating are you here for fishing um, you know are you, you want to live on the water um, are you more of a nightlife owl um, restaurants are restaurants really big for you Is shopping really big is a uh, location to an airport uh, something extremely important these are all different things that um, you know you should be sitting down with a, a real estate professional like myself uh, and going through somewhat of a consultation I always say hey let's let's take 20 minutes 20 to 30 minutes into a consultation but that's when the can opens up and uh, or Pandora's box of questions pop out so it never quite takes 30 minutes uh, I can keep it 30 minutes but uh, if you keep asking questions I'll, I'll keep answering so um, you know, I try to at least block out an hour worth of time to answer as many questions as possible. So um, once once you figure out what area that you want to purchase in, um, you know, the, the next step is, you know, uh, figuring out what, what price range you're in. For, for cash buyers, it's just a little bit differently. You know what your budget is, um, and we can sit down and go over um, all your, your pros and your cons things that are on your wish list, things that are definite. You definitely need three bedroom, two bath. You definitely need a pool. Or if you're looking at condo, you need a certain square footage. Um, you want a top floor unit, has to be an end unit. You want amenities, you know, uh, an aerobics facility, a clubhouse, um, activities director. You know, there's, there's a plethora of options out there um, that, that come into play where when you're picking an area or a community or the type of property that you're looking to uh, purchase even with land uh, you're looking to build a home okay well you're looking to build a 3500 square foot home with a sidecar garage well a standard size lot isn't really gonna cut it you know we probably have to look for something that's a little bit over that maybe 15 16 thousand square feet maybe we're going at a half an acre maybe we have to look at an acre um, you know these are all different different um, things or options that pop up that uh, you know are really really important for the real estate uh, professional to know so that way they can help you uh, find the property that you want 
So, um, so to start the process off, if you're a cash buyer, it's a little bit easier. Most people nowadays are really looking at financing. Um, I think I'm going to target the financing section right now because there's just a lot of first time home buyers or people who haven't purchased homes in years um, that just don't know what that process is with financing. The first thing that I hear uh, come out of people's mouth is, well, I don't have 20%. And it's like, oh, okay, well, that's okay. There, there aren't a lot of people that, that do have 20%. Um, we have tons of programs out there. Uh, we have down payment assistance. I mean, you don't even have to, um, you know, have uh, uh, 20% to put down. I mean, you have FHA financing for first time home buyers is three and a half percent. And now I want to give a quick disclaimer. I am, I am a real estate broker. I am, I am not um, a mortgage loan originator. I, I don't, I don't do mortgages. I just, have the basic information that I can go ahead and point you in the direction to. I have a, a couple of lenders, typically we'll, we'll introduce you to three or, or four, uh, so that way you can go ahead and shop between them. And of course, if you have your own preferred lender, um, or, you know, you're not tied to anyone, uh, we just wanna point you in the right direction. So the first step to home buying is, in my opinion, getting you pre-qualified and again this is for this is really for those uh, who are financing so pre-qualification is very important um, going out and uh, knocking on doors and opening doors looking at properties that you may or may not know you can afford just because you're like well I think I can get 300,000 I think I can get 500,000 but you're not sure really isn't the right way to go um, there's a there's several reasons um, one you don't want to waste your time you don't want to walk into this home, granite countertops, hits all the pluses with, with wood flooring throughout, quiet closed cabinets, the color pattern are awesome, the windows are just right in the right place, bringing in that light that you just love to see in the morning. Um, that, that all can play a role. It's, in, it's on the right size lot, it's perfect, and then you go to get pre-qualified or financing and you find out that you can't afford that home. To, to not go through all that agony of looking at a home that you absolutely love, falling in love with something before you could uh, actually figure out if you could buy it, um, the first step is to go ahead and get pre-qualified. When you sit down with a uh, mortgage broker or a uh, mor mortgage loan originator, they'll sit down and they'll counsel you on the different types of programs that can fit what you're looking for. Uh, for instance, there's there's new 3% conventional loan programs out there that are amazing. There are some people, I just had this happen, I, I promise you. Um, I'm not going to name any client names, but if you're listening, feel free to, to leave a message. But um, I, had, I had a client that came in. Um, they transferred to a different job, and their wife started up their own business. Now, they've been working at these jobs for about a year, but they don't have two years worth of tax returns. So, um, and then the one, the one, uh, the gentleman, the husband, he gets bonuses and, um, you know, he, the, he's trying to add that as part of his income. And so it's really hard to prove that without the tax returns and you need two tax returns and he's at a different job. And so most lenders are going to say, nope, can't do it. Well, one of the three lenders I can point you out to, they actually do bank statements. Uh, they do loans based off bank statements. So he was able to prove for the for the past 12 months by the uh, deposits into his bank um, that shows the type of income that he had. They have 12 month statement um, loans and then they have 24 um, bank statement loans. So either way, it's it, it was a way for them to track that that um, deposits or the money was getting put into the account so that he actually could afford what he was asking for. So these are these are just different things that um, we try, we, I know here at Aaron Catron and Company, we try to think outside the box. We don't want to put you into a box. Um, you know, not everyone's situation is the same. It, it, you know, some people can qualify, but you just got to find, find different ways or um, different lenders that have different parameters or different overlays or no overlays, um, if there's such thing. Uh, those real estate agents, <laughs> you, you understand what I mean by that. Oh, we have no overlays, then three days before closing. Oh, this overlay. Anyhow, um, so anyway, the first step for sure is let's go ahead and, and get you over to a lender. Let's pre-qualify you. Once we, we get that pre-qualification, it's like, you know, you're armed. You know, you're, you're ready to go. You're ready to purchase. And, and that, that really is a big deal because 
now that we've empowered you to get ready to go ahead and purchase that dream home, um, there's really, really no stopping you. You know, as soon as you find that home, we can go ahead and put together an offer. We uh, we put together that offer. You you have the uh, backing of that prequal, and it's a uh, it's pretty much smooth sailing. Nine times out of ten, I know with us, if um, with our sellers, if we get an offer in and and uh, a prequal is not not coming with it. Um, we, we, we tend to ask for that before we present the offer because the seller wants to know that the person that's looking to put an offer can actually purchase it. Uh, the worst thing is that you go negotiate with someone who really can't afford say 500,000 and they go get pre-qualified and it's really 350 and, and everyone kind of wasted their time. So um, we, we always ask on our side that the, the uh, buyer um, when they submit an offer that a pre-qualification accompanies it as well. So that that's really why the first step uh, to buying is really to arm yourself by getting pre-qualified. Um, so that, that really does help streamline the process also. Um, one of the biggest, biggest um, letdowns when financing that I've seen is that people take a long time to get the bank their documents. When we go under contract, if we set, say, 30 days to, to close, the, the bank is really working on uh, on that timeline and the first week is very critical so if they ask you for all your bank statements and everything honestly you really should have a sense of urgency and get that over to them as soon as possible as a matter of fact I personally would rather my clients have submitted all their documents to their lender um, or whatever preferred lender they're working with and get that done while they have the prequal before we make the offer because if it takes you time to go look for your tax returns and a week or two passes by, you've already went a week or two into um, one, your inspection period on the property, and two, the lending process. So once you have all those documents submitted to your lender and they looked it all over, um, they, that the loan originator, what he does is gives it to his processor and then the processor looks over, make sure they have everything and then they send it to the underwriter. When we get you uh, an executed contract meaning that the seller has agreed to your price and you agreed to pay the seller's price so there's a mutual agreement you will have what we call an executed contract so it, it becomes it goes from offer to contract and so with that once we have that contract that executed contract both both the buyer and the seller have agreed and signed their signatures and initials on on the documents we go ahead and send that out to your lender now your lender then sends it to the underwriter, which starts to then go ahead and process that loan. The, the next step from there is usually um, the underwriter will send out what, what they call conditions. Um, they're gonna ask questions on certain little things. No file is perfect. I've never seen one file go to an underwriter and not come back with conditions. So that's gonna be the next big step. During that time frame, you're they're also ordering an appraisal. So while the bank is doing all that business, us, the real estate professional and the buyer, we're, we're, go, we're performing all your home inspections. So we're inspecting the home, we're making sure everything is sound. Uh, we have a licensed home inspector on the roof, checking the roof, um, checking the appliances, making sure that they're all working, optimal temperature with the AC system. If there's a pool, checking the pool. I mean, they're, they're just, they're going through the whole house, making sure everything is fine. If you're on a well or septic system, obviously that we're doing water tests, we're doing a septic test. So anyhow, and then depending on the loan that you have, um, th whatever inspections call for that. So us, the real estate professionals and the buyer, we're doing our thing while the lender's doing their thing. And so that's why it's really, really important to get that documentation out. Um, it's easy for us to find you that dream home and then for us to negotiate that. Well, I won't say it's easy, uh, but sometimes, you know, we have to use some tactics to go ahead and, and the negotiation process, um, especially if you're financing to try to put you in front of that seller uh, who probably might have a cash buyer submitting an offer as well. But um, anyway, we, we would work on that end while the lender is on the back end working on your loan. So once the conditions are sent to you, um, I if I'm always I always make myself available to speak one on one with the buyer um, to help them understand what the conditions are because when you look at it, it's like jargon you're like uh, I'm just busy with kids I'm busy with work um, 
whatever it is you, you've you've got you've got to hit the gym and you just don't understand this and you you toss it to the side and that's like one of the biggest no nos. We're like no, we 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 need to really take care of this. So anyway, um, I I myself I sit down with my clients. I make the time. You bring in all your paperwork. We sit down. We go over it, and then from there. We go ahead and uh, scan it and send it over to the lender to get that processing. Then an appraisal is done on your home, on the home that you're uh, looking to purchase. Um, once that value comes in, that's usually the last step. So once you clear those conditions, the last step is usually just waiting on a, the last condition is usually just the waiting on the appraisal to come back. And then after that, clear to close. Um, you're, you're issued a, uh, before closing at least three days some some lenders do five days before closing they issue out the documents you review it um, I I review the HUD to make sure the numbers look correct and then um, we're at the closing table signing papers and uh, we're handing you keys to your new home so um, that's that's pretty much the buying process again number one um, you want to pick out the area make sure the area that you you're wanting to be in is is that area you know it's hitting all the hot buttons um, then number two um, is go ahead and, and get pre-qualified um, with a lender if you're financing obviously again this is this is for those that are financing cash again that's 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 a different that's a different ball game um, we, we don't deal with lenders so it's a little bit smoother we with with financing we're closing deals between 20 um, and depending on the loan, maybe 45 days, but typically 20 to 30 days is our time frame um, with the lenders that I use. Um, and then lenders that, um, that, that, I don't, that I don't work with often, like a Quicken Loans or Rocket Mortgage, I mean, they're pretty quick at closing loans too, uh, my experience anyway with, with those lenders. So um, if you have any questions whatsoever on the buying process, I mean, there's a whole lot of little other steps and other questions that a lot of people are going to have. Um, please feel free to reach out. Um, I, I'm going to do a video on new construction. I've got a lot of new construction um, deals going on, a lot of incentives. I've got lenders that will pay your closing costs on new construction. I've got this new construction on a carriage home, three bedroom, two bath with a den, um, late on, with a lake view. Uh, well, they'll pay your whole HOA fee for a whole year and give you up to $10,000 for your closing costs, which is all your closing costs. And the price range for this um, three bedroom, two bath with a den, I think it's right around that 230 range. Um, and, and the community is beautiful. All the properties are on water. Um, it's gated, maintenance free. They water your grass, cut your grass. Um, the clubhouse is, is huge, tons of amenities, fitness center. Um, Infinity Edge Pool looks like it's pouring into the lake. Um, you know, you're going to watch beautiful sunsets off that lake all day. But that's just one of the communities. I've got tons of communities all over. Um, I've got homes, brand new homes in all types of budgets. I've got four, I got this one four bedroom, two bath home, 1,800 square feet, right around that 220 range. Um, in, a, in a gated maintenance free community as well. Just a lot of, a lot of new construction going on. If you have a lot, um, we can go ahead and see if uh, any of our floor plans can fit your um, your lot. We deal with our sister company partners construction on a lot of custom homes, but I have a lot of relationships with other builders uh, such as you know Wade Journey. Um, you have a lot in the area like a Miranda or an Adams as well. You know whatever your budget is, we could definitely work um, work something out with one of these local builders. So uh, thanks for listening to my first little video slash podcast. Uh, thing that I'm doing here. I, I don't have a name here, but um, uh, thanks. And if you have any questions, don't you can DM me or you can email me, text me, whatever. Um, I'm easy to get a hold of. See ya.